The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of the Catholic TV Network. The Catholic TV Network welcomes and invites you to celebrate the sacred mysteries, listen to God's Word, and in the Holy Eucharist, proclaim the victory of Jesus over death until He comes in glory. Brothers and sisters, good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Uh, today we are, pleased, uh, we are pleased to welcome Abigail and Carmela. They will serve at the altar of God. Brothers and sisters, as we, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of Christ's love, let us acknowledge all our sins. Please bow your heads and close your eyes in the silence of your hearts. Ask for the forgiveness of God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. We offer this Eucharist for all the community of the viewers of the Catholic TV Network. A grant we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection may, through the love of the Spirit, ourselves arise to newness of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him, for the letters uh, to the synagogue in Damascus, that if he should find any man or woman who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice, but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he eat, neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he said, Here I am, Lord. 
the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay hand, his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who, who, all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house, laying his hands on him. He said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Jews uh, quarreled among themselves, uh, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is a true food, and my blood is a true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have a life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. 
This is the bread that came down from heaven, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. What can we understand from this preaching by Jesus Christ on him as the living bread? Saint Augustine helps us to understand that a three great a truth can be kept from this wonderful preaching, this wonderful truth. First, Jesus as the living bread is a calling to believe that. God cares. He came. He was made flesh. And Jesus Christ was him in the flesh. So he is present with us, among us, all the time. It may happen that in our lives, Difficulties, problems, can uh, try to uh, tempt us to uh, doubt about him, but God is there and God cares. If we believe in this truth that Jesus Christ is his presence among us, we will reach a salvation. Second, uh, preaching Jesus Christ as the living bread means that we need to develop with God a relationship of love. To believe in God is not just I adhere with the truth that the church is preaching, but to love God, to love the example that Jesus Christ gave us. To love, the, for instance, the fact by which God so all those people condemning that woman caught in adultery and told her, my daughter, you may go because I will not condemn you. So uh, the mercy of God on the face of Jesus Christ, on his, in his example, is to be loved. And third, the preaching on the on Jesus Christ as the living bread is also a way to tell us we are the body of Christ. The church is actually the body of Christ. We are the members. Jesus Christ is the head. So as a church, we grow as one, as brothers and sisters. So the love that we have for God must be translated, transferred as a love for our brothers and sisters. This is the great sign of hope that we need to have, that we will be for the world. So those three wonderful truths, according to the preaching of Jesus Christ as the living bread, faith in God that always care. Second, Jesus Christ in us, as the living bread, a relationship of love and third, the church as a sign of hope for the world, faith, love and hope, the great ways that we can be for the world, instruments of God's presence. We can help God to transform the world. We can be true Christians by being men and women of faith, hope, and love. And in this time, God will be a living bread for the world through us. May this be so for each of us, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
please be stand and let us pray. For the church that we form, a community of faith, may we proclaim to all the world that God cares for all mankind. We pray to the Lord. For all the nations on earth, may the testimony of all Christian people bring them to peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick, may through the intercession of, these, of, of all of us, through the offering of this Eucharist, they can find complete and total recovery. We pray to the Lord. For all the community of, of our viewers in the Catholic TV network, may they find through the offering of this Eucharist all the necessary that will make of them people of faith, love, and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord and now, friends, in the silence of your hearts, present to God your personal intention. Almighty and ever-living God, grant us, we beseech you, a spirit of faith, hope, and love, so we may, for the world, signs of your mercy. We ask of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Uh, graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, in accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask of this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light arise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all is risen. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, 
every land, every people, exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you, my Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may, be we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. Have mercy on the whole community of viewers of the Catholic TV network. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, though not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace. Peace. Peace with you. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaking of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. We ask of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the masses indeed. Thanks be to God. May you have. We have worshipped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Bishop Reed, The Catholic TV Network, P.O. Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Join us anytime on Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire, or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.